<laughs> Welcome to the first edition of Perp Plays. In this series, we'll be going behind the scenes of some of your favorite games. We'll begin Perp Plays with a behind the scenes look of the curious tale of the stolen pets by Fast Travel Games. Enjoy. Hi everyone, my name is Andreas Juliusson. I am the hello. I am the chief marketing officer for VR games developer Fast Travel Games, and uh, this is our latest game, The Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets. And the starting menu uh, and your your hands as cotton balls will. Now, this is the intro to the game where your grandfather talks to you in a dream uh, about your adventures that you used to embark on when you were you were a kid. And around you in the world here, and you don't know this yet, of course, are a lot of the elements that you will come to interact with to solve the puzzles, uh, which will help you to find the animals. The grandpa is played by Martin Cox from the UK, uh, and the funny thing is that we didn't know that we were gonna select a grandpa over a grandmother until we actually heard him record his uh, audition for us. When we first heard him, we said, okay, this is the guy, we have to have him. So from that moment on, it was a grandpa. Now this is your uh, world select, really. Uh, but also your childhood bedroom that you used to share with your sister when you were young. And there's a lot of details and hidden elements inside this room. Um, for example, you can hear the ocean if you put the seashell on to, uh, toward your ear. Um, there is also a hidden easter egg. If you look underneath the top bed here, you can actually see a painting of the first world that my uh, own daughter uh, drew for James and the team here in Fast Travel Games. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so the paintings here represent each of the worlds you can travel to. And the clock next to it is our uh, go back item across the worlds. Every summer, during your so what you see right now is the first world. And we created this one to be a li little bit easier than the other worlds. To uh, have a very accessible first moment in the game. And that's the paper there that just flew up on your in your face is the only tutorial you get. So we created the game to be highly intuitive. And you can see uh, the first time we present the two sisters. One is a more generic red uh, jacket and the other is dressed as a magician. And uh, it's up to you really to find out why that is and more about the relationship between the sisters. This is the UI island as we call it. It's your progress uh, in the world where you can see how many animals you've found and also if you have found any pocket money which are optional items to find in each world. Uh, the goal of the game is to uh, revisit the miniature worlds from your childhood where you and your grandfather and your sister played when, when you were young. Uh, the pets, the animals have gone missing and it's up to you to uh, find all these by interacting with all the elements in the worlds and to solve puzzles. Oh. Now you see there's a bunch of elements now that you can interact with and play with. Uh, not all of them are tied to a specific puzzle, so it's very much like let your fantasy go wild and see what happens when you touch things and, and try things out. Yeah, that was the pocket money that you found. Uh, optional. Doesn't have to find them to progress, but something nice might happen if you do. Uh, the animals in each world are tied to the world theme, so in this world we have more regular pets like a dog and a cat, etc. And as you progress through the game, you will have more um, different kind of animals. Like in the next world that we'll see soon, you will have mammoths and polar bear because it's a wintry theme. We actually toyed with the idea of allowing players to pick up the animals and put them on different places, but we decided not to in the end, uh, and that was because we really didn't want people to put them on top of a candle or throw them against a rock, stuff like that. So we decided to keep it nice instead. So that dog there is the only animal actually in the whole game that has a name. It's called Spot. That's your childhood dog pet.
Yeah, and there you see your progress now. With you. And uh, there is a uh, claymation style animation to the game, which is something we really, really wanted to nail. And we did that by basically animating every second frame instead of every frame to make the characters and the animals and all the animations look like this old cartoon claymation style. Right, so that's that's a, an example of a puzzle there where you open the chest by finding three hidden buttons. And then you can interact with the animals after you found them as well. And the rabbit just uh, hid away from you. There is also some subtle hints in the worlds. Uh, that can help you progress. So should you be stuck, we really want players to explore and look at details. For example, there is a wooden sign next to the teacup. And uh, the teacup is pretty funny actually. James Hunt mentioned our creative lead for the game. He has uh, English heritage, so the, the teacup puzzle is actually a uh, celebration to uh, the English heritage for our creative lead of the game. So, in the second world, we come to what's called a winter vacation, where you suspend your winters along with your sister and your grandfather. Um, there is a lot of Swedish ingredients in these, in this level. So, not only do you have these Christmas trees, but there are also flowers, these white flowers you see, specific to, uh, to Sweden and some berries that you also find in Sweden. Uh, this world is uh, slightly more vertical than the first world, so we really want players to you know, lean in, stand up or crouch if they want to, or they can use the buttons to raise and lower the worlds as well. Oh. And this is also the world, the first time you get to see Grandpa. In action. Yeah. As you can see, uh, when you find an animal, the magician's sister appears and she looks pretty annoyed that you actually found an animal. And why that is, is something you will have to find out by progressing through the game. So this was, uh, this was the kind of puzzle we really wanted to integrate into the game. Uh, the idea of using real-life uh, items like a hair dryer to melt snow, for example, it's so much fun that you see players just uh, blowing away all of the snow at the whole level. And, you know, by doing it, you might find some hidden coins, etc. The sky is uh, handmade, hand drawn actually by uh, Jim Svanberg, our 3D artist as well, to really get that get that cozy, dreamlike feeling around. Now the salt shaker, as we call it, is really not a salt shaker, it's supposed to be a sugar shaker to sprinkle snow around the world, but most players think it's a salt shaker, which is a bit troublesome because salt is usually used to get snow to melt. Uh, so we had a bit of a, uh, a challenge there to get people to understand that you're supposed to use the, the sugar shaker to sprinkle snow uh, and to make things happen in the world. As you can see as well, you don't have any hands in the game. Instead, you got these cotton balls or dandelions. And uh, it's really because the interactions in the game are, are so simple. So you don't really have to have fingers or hands. Uh, and this is more of a uh, uh, generic approach. Right, so after each world you come back to your bedroom where you can see 
the pocket money you collected. You can see the sticker board uh, on the right side where you can, you know, follow your collection of animals and uh, decide to revisit worlds or proceed to new worlds. Uh, the music is also worth mentioning. We, uh, uh, The creative lead for the game, James Hunt, is a massive fan of uh, Wintergatan, who are the creators of the Marble Machine, which you might have seen on YouTube, for example. So we reached out to them, really, and and basically pitched our game to them and said, we would love to have your music featured in this game. We believe it fits perfectly, and, and they agreed. So the whole game, the intro and all the worlds, have uh, featured music from uh, Wintergatan's catalog. So yeah, there are more adventures waiting after this, so uh, hope you like this uh, short commentary of the game, and uh, yeah, see you in the miniature worlds.